Hey guys, Loman02 here, currently a drafting an M19 core set. What do we think of this pack? Well, Desecrated Tomb are rare is bad, it's a constructed card. Aether Shield Artificer is a fine card. Um, Switcheroo is quite good, and I think sometimes Blue ends up being underdrafted. Um, Shock is obviously worth noticing. There's obviously a Siege Breaker Giant in this pack as well. Well, what do I think of this pack? I think this pack is interesting. So, I can go one of two ways. Like, I think Siegebreaker Giant is the is a better red pickup than Shock is. Although Shock is more splashable. But I think if I take either one of the two red cards that are good, not Lava Axe. Lava Axe is not great. Um, it's going to send a signal um, that red is open or someone's going to pick one of the other cards. Switcheroo is also quite powerful. And sometimes Scholar of Stars does go around. Cavalry Drill Master is also fine. You know, I'm going to go for the big red card here and take the Siege Breaker, because I think the card is extremely powerful. Um, So, I think Starcrown Stag is probably better than Electrify. Like, it's an active card. Yes, there are two decent uncommons in here. The rare is not good. This card is actually not horrible, but I think I like Starcrown Stag just better. And there weren't a lot of great white cards in that first pack. Well, this is a great white card, so I'm going to take this. Um, what does this guy do? I'm a man of any color, he's ramp. And he can pay 7 and create a 5-5 five, five flyer. Okay. Uh, Gaspark Twins. This card's just a big dude. Um, Aviation Pioneer is also quite good. Gearsmith Guardian I actually like. I don't think it's terrible. Oaken Forum's not great. Marauder's Axe has not really impressed me, but it's fine. I'm going to pick up the good white card here. Okay, we're starting to run out of good white cards. Uh, this card is okay. Um, it's fine. I mean, it does have Trample. It does not have Haste. So it pretty much dies to most everything. It's probably better to take than the Luxodon Lime Breaker. Knight of, the, Knight of the Tusk is not a card. Bristling Boar is quite good. So green is open, but green tends to always be open. Or would I rather just take the Snapping Drake? Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to take this Uncommon. I don't think it's horrific. But it's also not great either. I mean, it doesn't die to shock at a minimum. And, you know, it does get a lot of damage in. We do want to flesh out the lower end of the curve. Alright, Goblin Motivator. There's another Gaspar Twins. Maybe we should just be in green, because this card is pretty good. I mean, it's just big. It has to attack, or it can block an additional creature. That's what it does. Um, We could just take the big dude. I think green's just so bad, though. You know, what's the better card? Daybreak Chaplain or Luxodon Lime Breaker? I mean, we'd probably just take a Breaker. This deck looks like it wants to attack more than it wants to block um, so far. But I think if we were playing a little, if we were drafting a little better, we'd start taking some green cards because no one's taking green. But, like, I just know how weak green is. Green is just so bad in this format. Um, there's no good ramp. There's the Blanche or Blanch Wood Armor. Um, but here, I mean, Dwindle is quite good. Skeleton Archer I actually like. Um, Goblet Instigator is not a bad card. And it could go into, like, this gives plus one, plus one to all the dudes. Yeah, I think this is going to be fine. Alright, here, Gallant Cavalry is quite good. Um, it's not like, you know, it's probably overrated a little bit, but... I think it's certainly worth picking up here. There's a Colossal Dreadmore. There's just a bunch of big green dudes. Like, green is... I don't know. The one thing I am lacking is removal right now. I kind of just have an aggro deck. Uh, but I guess we, this is kind of removal, the Silver st Crown Stag. If you can get three of them, like their value just goes up with each one you have. So white tends to be the best color in this cube, or in this uh, format. I keep on to call it a cube. Sorry, guys. Um, Yeah, Bogart Brute. That is, that is a good guy right there. Stitcher Supplier is more of a constructed card. It d ditches stuff in your graveyard for mill, self-mill. This card can actually be pretty good in a black-white deck. I've yet to draft that deck. Um, it just hasn't come, hasn't really shown itself to be something that's viable for me yet. I played against it, and it's pretty decent. It has like the four-drop uh, gold card that um, makes you bats. There's a few other cards that care about life gain. Basically, we don't want to see the life gain deck, um, but I think we can probably overpower it. I mean, we have eight creatures and we're eight picks deep. We do want some better low end. Like, I think this deck's going to want some two drops in it. Um, if we get enough Goblin Instigators, this could even be um, a uh, Trumpet Blast deck. I wouldn't be opposed to that. 
Well, I'm trying to remember what my first draft was. My first draft may have been Red White Boros Aggro as well. I've actually done a couple more. Uh, my last draft was actually really sick. It was, uh, let me see if I can pull up the, what the deck list looked like. I think it was in this chat. I posted it, yeah. It had th three sleeps. I call this deck nap time. The deck was sick. It was very, very good. Also, a Wind Reader, or Wind Reader Sphinx had two exclusion mages. The deck was very, very good. Unfortunately, it went 2-1 because I played a game where I had a mulligan to five and had an unfortunate um, game where I essentially saw 15 lands in the top 15 cards. How you do that is by, via Omen Speaker. So I had three spells, and then, uh, yeah... It was not pretty. Um, well, this card has a lot of upside to it. Invoke the Divine is a fine card. I think I'm going to take the card with more upside to it at this point. Oh, wow. This should not be coming around this late. All right, so white is definitely open. I mean, I think we're in the right colors. Um, the Shock did not come around. Not shockingly, though. But I think Siegebreaker was more correct there. Um, stone Quarry is fine. I, I, don't, I can get a Hostile Minotaur if I want it. I'll put a Stone Quarry in my sideboard. Mana Fixing is always nice, although... And right now, actually, I think this is fine. Like, Stone Quarry is fine, like, turn one and turn two. Really, turn one. Um... I will put in a Mare, but I'm a little tentative to do it. I think the Mare, the upside of the Mare is pretty powerful there. Um, Ghost Form is virtually unplayable. Uh, this card, I'm not a huge fan of either. I'll take a Titanic Growth. Um, I've tried playing a deck with a bazillion, um, whatever that card is, the one mana, 2-2 two, two possibly, if you have an artifact in play, it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of interesting artifact synergies, I think that's really in, like, um, blue-white. Blue-white's where it's incentivized, there's, like, the 4-drop gold card that becomes a 4-4, four, four, as opposed to a 2-4 and gains flying if you have an artifact. There's this thing, which we picked up, which is just, right now, just a, th a hill giant is essentially all it is in this deck right now, but... Hill Giant is not horrific in draft. I don't know if I'm going to play the Mare. Alright, well, our un our rare is unplayable. This card's actually great, but we can't really play it in this deck. Inspired Charge would be a card I would not mind wheeling. But I think I'm going to pick up Gallant Cavalry. Um, sure Strike would be okay as well. The Horizon Scholar is a great card, but I, I can't play it, unfortunately, in this deck. So I'm just going to pick up another Gallant Cavalry. You know, we're kind of, you know, investing in a Swarm-style strategy. Stone Quarry will likely get played in this. Like I said, Mare could just sideboard. Against blue decks, it's actually obviously very good. Against a mono blue deck. But I think this deck in general will be pretty decent against blue decks because its threat density should just be higher. Alright, I actually do like Dry Green Speaker. It's kind of like um, kind of like a version of... Sorry, thinking. It's kind of like a version of Sinbad. I'm just thinking about this pack. So, Volley Veteran is interesting because I do have the Instigator plus the Bogart Brute. I am going to pass up on a Goblin in, uh, Instigator here um, for the Veteran. But I think the Veteran is just a higher upside card. Let me put this in the sideboard. Um, this this thing's enchanted. It gains you life. Or it can attack, right? Which then makes it a pretty good card. I don't have any enchantments yet. Sovereign? Sovereign is the best card in this pack, quite easily. Rabbit Bite's also quite good. Anaki Ogre is fine. I've actually, I was, I normally am not impressed by 4 twos, but it's done okay work for me in this format. It's obviously strictly better than the Luxodon. Uh, Linebreaker. Do I speculate on this card? I feel like I can get an Ogre any time. Um, Enchanted or Equipped. I'm going to pick this dude up. Like, I think it's just, it, it could have higher upside. There's another Instigator. But I think Drillmaster is generally going to be better in this deck. Maybe I want an Instigator. Instigator does make the Volley Veteran better. Alright, Gutter Snipe. Unfortunately, this is not going to happen in this deck. Um, Inspired Charge. That is a card I will play in this deck. Um, oh, there's Angel of Dawn. Yeah, unfortunately, it's got to be Angel of Dawn here over Inspired Charge. We can get an Inspired Charge. I think Angel of Dawn is just a much higher upside card. And like we said, white is kind of wheeling a little more heavily. We saw a Pegasus Courser wheel a ta or wheel the table, and that's kind of rare because Pegasus Courser, you know, it's a little worse than it was in its uh, original format, but it's still quite good here. All right, well, revitalize new, no. maybe just an explosive apparatus. So we don't have a lot of removal. Uh, we can also take a fire elemental, but that card's kind of meh. I think I'll take an apparatus here. Um, Goblin Motivator, I think, will be just fine in this deck. That's the kind of effect you want in this style of deck. Novice Knight is kind of an iffy one. We're going to put him in the sideboard for now. Oops. But 
like I said, I, I think it was worth taking in that pack just to see. I mean, because we're we're I think we're we have it we're doing well enough right now with the the general strategy we have. Now we don't have removal. Uh, we have volley veteran and explosive apparatus to remove things. And we have some flyers. We have the Star Crown Stag, which kind of removes things. Siege Breaker kind of removes things. And then we've got these two flyers right here, plus Pegasus Corsair. Um, and this thing tramples. Yeah. I suppose this is kind of a combo with Goblin Motivator as well. Because if you can smack with this thing and then just put it back in your library, it tends to be okay. I mean, it's four mana for seven damage. A seven da uh, basically, a one cheaper, but more damage uh, Lava Axe is not horrible. Um, so Havoc Devils is obviously a better card than Vashino Pyromancer, but it is more mana, it's more color intensive. I already have a lot of 4-drops. I think I would be happier with the Pyromancer in this build. Okay, Inspired Charge is a card I think we could take. The Dwarven Priest is also an interesting sideboard card, but I think we're going to want something like Inspired Charge for all the instigators we have. Wouldn't mind getting some more Bogart Brutes as well. I think that card's actually quite good. Uh, Menace is obviously quite powerful, and generally it allows you to set up some unfavorable blocks where you trade with a card that you would prefer to trade with over, you know, a suboptimal card that you could trade with. 3-2 on its own is not great stats, as we were saying. Luxodon Linebreaker is kind of a dog, but... Or, well, I guess an elephant. <laughs> uh, but... Alright, I will take a Motivator. Oresco's Swift Claw is... Meh. Three ones don't tend to be that impressive. All right, Sure Strike is actually an effect I will pick up. I'm in a 17 creature deck, and Sure Strike is a good combat trick. This card is fine. Smelt, decent sideboard. Uh, Epicure of Blood is actually not a horrible card. I'm kind of shocked it was still in there. Uh, crash through. Well, it cycles. Uh, doesn't do much else for us in this deck, though. I guess it's not horrible. We have like, an Anaki Ogre and whatnot, so I mean, I guess we could trample over, but I think we're going to tend to win by just, you know just sheer mass of creatures. This is already kind of an overrun effect, kind of an overrun effect. This is kind of an overrun effect. I guess Trample would be nice with those, but... This deck's feeling like a pretty solid 2-1 deck, but we're not even that far. Right? Palladium Moors is actually a very strong card. It's in two of our colors. Could possibly splash it, but that seems very dubious to me. Meteor Golem is also quite powerful, but this deck appears like it's going to be trying to get underneath the curve. We're very short on interaction and removal right now, so I'm going to take a Luminous Bonds, because I think the card is quite good. Okay, well, this is a... Uh, so, it's between a couple cards here. Um, I think the Remorseful Cleric is the card I'm going to take, because it's an efficient flying threat. We already have two of these Goblin Motivators and two Instigators for the Volley Veterans. I think we're pretty well set up there. Um, I have played this dude, I think, twice in draft. Um, he's been fine. Um, Sparked on Dragon's also quite good, but this deck does not feel like it's going to be getting into tons of mana. Um, well, then... <laughs> Um, yeah, that was a theory piece. So I had this, like, person tell me this weird theory, and I ended up testing it out. I don't know if it's, in, you know, empirically sure. Oh, okay, this is actually good in this deck. I mean, I do want the Gallant Cavalry, but, like, in this deck, I've got this, 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 and this. All right. Maybe we board this for now. I'll try the Goblin Trash Master. I mean, he gives everything some, some bonuses. He has random utility. And he is just a 3-3. Three, He's a hill giant um, at the end of the day. But if I have instigators, it makes them big. Like, that seems pretty good. Now goblins are going to become better pickups because I have a lord. Seems pretty cool. Not really keen on playing the, the line breaker. This is possibly going to be a 16 lander. So, Trash Master Aggro. <laughs> okay, we want another motivator. I think we're going to be happier taking a Courser here. We have a lot of Ground Pounders, and being able to get them over the top is generally going to be good. Um, Lightning Mare, like I said, I don't know how much I want to play this card. Because I appear to be decently split between white and red. I mean, I want more red in the low end. I only have single white requirements. I have double red requirements in the 2, 3, and 5 drop spot. As if I don't play Inspired Charge. Um, so... Yeah, the Aether Sphere Artificer has not gotten any better. Um, this card that gives bonuses to an artifact creatures. But this deck appears pretty decent. Um, 
I don't know if I really want explosive apparatus either. I feel like I will tend to want to be doing better things with my mana. Um, I do have the Luminous Bonds. I guess I have Sure Strike, which is kind of removal. I have a decent bit of evasion. Alright, well, this is a... Man, I really want that Shock, but like I really want the Bogart Brute as well. To replace the Smiter. I think I'm going to pick up this and, you know, hope to maybe get another one. I really don't want to play this dude, but, like, right now the curve is actually... I kind of like how this curve set up. Um, so I kind of do want another three-drop creature so I can go, you know, one, two, three. But generally it's going to probably be two, three, four is how this deck's going to work out. Um, Star Crown would also be a nice pickup. <laughs> We're at 21 creatures. That's quite a few. Really no doubt about what we're trying to do here. Alright, Cavalry Drillmaster is a great card. It is a fine, fine card. So we're going to pick that up and be happy about it. Um, well, this pack has a lot of stuff we'd like. I would like another Pegasus course here, but I don't think I can uh, turn this down. Uh, maybe we sideboard this. I don't really need more creatures, so I'm going to pick up an Active Treason because it's very good against some decks. Uh, I think I sideboarded the wrong thing out there. I don't think I need this guy. Um, Havoc Devils, fine. Actually, Dwarven Priest is probably a better card for, like, the aggro mirrors. Um, pick up a Motivator. Did not get an equipment. So. Gallant Cavalry? I mean, it's possible. I don't... Man, this is going to be an interesting build, because I have a lot of playable cards. I don't think I need another one of these. Remember, could you... Mm. I think I'm good on Goblin Motivators. I think I have three of them available to me right now. I think I'll take on a Johnny's Welcome, even though I don't think it's a card I'll play very often. Could have taken Thud in the previous pack. Well, it's like we're going to get another Bogart Brute. So we're at 26 cards right now. This card feels kind of hopeful to me. Like, I just, you know, it's a good card. But I feel like this deck can generally overwhelm in the mid-game. I have three gavalry, or Gallant Cavalries, which is just a lot of dudes. Two of these guys, which are basically removal. This is removal. Sure Strike, kind of removal. Shock, removal. Siege Breaker, removal. I'm really wondering, with this many creatures, if I do want just an Inspired Charge in this deck. Veteran is removal. Um, Trash Master, let's just do the count here. So this, this. These two. Yep. The two motivators and the brute all kind of work well together. I think that's enough upside to play Trash Master. All right, let's not hit the tusk. If I, I don't know, I don't know what this card is good for. It's just a wall, but it costs way too much. Oh, so we're twenty-five cards in deck. This guy's a Vashinu. Yeah, okay. So I think there's enough upside to Trash Master, but I don't. Hmm. Do I cut one of the Gallant Cavalry and just try out an Inspire Charge? I don't know. That seems that seems like it may be crazy. I already have the Angels here. Um, so what do I cut? I do think I want the Drill Master. I like that card to no small extent. I do want the two Flyers that give other guys flying. Maybe I cut a Line Breaker. And then maybe I cut one Cavalry. No, I could probably go 16 lands in this deck. Maybe that's crazy. 8-8 eight, eight split, of course, because, I mean, the man is just not going to be good. Uh, I have more double red requirements than I do double white, so I think I can cut one planes and put it in my stone quarry. But I have a lot of fours. So I do want to hit lands with this deck, but... Hmm. I think I'm going to try to run it at 16. This is one of those decks that definitely does not have a ton of power, so it needs to... Its power is going to be the curve... So it's not going to mulligan as well, I don't think. Uh, we're gonna, we're still going to want to keep two to three land hands. Um, this is kind of like one of the, the times where you like look at the power of like a fetch land because if I could I, if I could have fetch lands in this, I'd obviously run seventeen because I could just thin my deck, but have good opening consistency. All right, come on, shuffler, give me two to three lands in my opener and some castable spells. Yep, perfect. This hand is not horrible at all. So keep. Could only be made better by right, playing against blue. All right. Well, that dude is kind of a combo with the goblin motivator. So motivator and go. And 
And unless we draw something, you know, a two drop next turn, we'll probably be just attacking with it and passing it and then trying to play like an Anaki Ogre if our opponent has an open board. All right. Just going to play the motivator and attack. Okay. I'll attack with both. They want to block with their Thopter. I think that's okay. Okay, get in there for two. Okay, and a Johnny's Pride Mate. Or Pride Mage, rather. Alright, Essence Scatter, I assume. Yep. Oh, Anticipate, okay. I'm not going to play around it. Like, that's my, my deck just casts creatures, so... Playing around it would be kind of silly. I guess I could have gone Gallant Cavalry to be more efficient, but... I'm going to pass 5 damage through here, get them down to 13. If they want to counterattack, they can certainly do that. It looks like they may have a small... Sub sub game is a life gain deck. And if we get land, we can go with an Angel of Dawn next turn, which would be quite strong. Okay, a Dwindle. Alright, well, maybe we're going to wait on that. Alright, Gallant Cavalry. Essence Scatter. If you have it, you have it. You just have to accept that. I don't want to run the Angel of Dawn into an Essence Scatter, though, if they have it. Um, and if this resolves, it makes Angel of Dawn even better, and it also means they have to react to the board even more. We're just going to attack with these two, leave a bunch of blockers back. Yes, I could have uh, gotten a little more damage in, but kind of want to see what they do here. Okay, the Pegasus Corsair. Okay, and a trusty Pack Beast. And they do not attack. Okay. this thing over. Okay. <clears throat> well, now they're solely on the defensive. All right, got them. Got there. I had the Bogart Brute. We could haste in, and that's a Force 2 block, 2 chump block. Um, so against blue decks, I tend to like this. They have some blue creatures, so Lightning Mare becomes more and more interesting, but they also have some, obviously, some white guys as well, some white critters. Uh, this is 2 or 3, 2. Eh. They had a lot of 3 toughness guys. Um, I don't think I need a Johnny's Welcome. Inspired Charge may be good enough, but I think I just like having 21 creatures in my deck and just being able to overwhelm them. Uh, they did not show us Essence Scatter that game. They definitely represented it very strongly. Um, you know, and I, you know, you look at it one of two ways. I either, you know, failed to play around it or, you know, deliberately did not, which is kind of how I'm looking at it because I just don't care. If they're Essence Scattering my stuff, it means they're not developing their board. Um, quick break, guys. I'm going to use the restroom right quick and we'll be back to, uh, you know, see how this round goes.
All right, guys, back, and this is a certain keep. Uh, turn one play, no turn two, but we have turn three, and we have a pretty strong turn four play in Goblin Ta Trash Master. And my opponent is mulliganing, which my deck's going to love. Yeah, this deck feels like a pretty solid 2-1 deck. We'll see how it ends up faring. It's got a few interesting synergies. I do think Motivator is actually quite good. I was kind of low on the card when the format first started, but, um, you know, now I'm kind of all about it. All right, go ahead, sir. Nope, that's removal. Well, there's no force spike in the format, so this is resolving, to my knowledge. Unless well, is a rare I don't know about. Okay. Well, kind of a perfect draw because I don't have to be punished by that card right now and it fixes very well. Get in there for one. Okay. Not going to attack here. <laughs> no need for that. I'm going to try to bluff a zero mana ramp spell. If this comes in, yeah, it's it's going to get me. Go ahead and cast your Anticipate or whatever. Not going to block it. Okay, a Field Creeper. Well, I think we just go ahead and get value here. Just kill this thing off. And slam in there for five. Seems good. Yeah, poor opponent mulligan to five, and I think they're probably just going to lose the game now. Yep, they're not going to lead back a blocker. And cast a dude. Okay. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I think it's just over. Goblin Lord um, plus this seems good enough. So, t pretty hasty 2-0, but that's kind of what you... If this deck wins, it's going to tend to win fast, I think, because, I mean, if we just look at the deck, it's just it's very uh, creature-heavy. Um, so what it's looking to do is just overwhelm the opponent um, playing 16 lands because, you know, we're not an exceedingly mana-intensive deck, although we do have cards like Siege Breaker, which are much more mana-intensive. I'm not even sure if it's correct that I should have gone the Goblin route over, um... Alright, what do we think of this hand? Over just playing the Inspire Charge. I think we keep this. We're on the draw again, which is not exactly where we want to be. We have our one of our best removal spells. Okay, Fountain. Oh, Fountain's fine. Alright. Play this out. We do not have the Mare in our deck right now. Well, that's going to be a little annoying, because they're going to gain some life. Okie doke, well, a life linker. I had a really good one yesterday. Okay, and go ahead. I think over time this is going to make me more money. I could have also played out the Bogart Brute there, which is going to do more damage in and of itself next turn. I guess that's the same amount. Assuming neither of my critters dies. Okay, well, I'm going to discard a card. Which card do I want to discard? Probably the Cavalry, I think. And I lose two life here. Yep. Well, this may be a tough matchup for us. Land? Nope, no land here. I 
So we'll attempt to get in there. I will trade you for this dude. Okay, Grave Digger. Okay. Well, that's a lot of value. So this is going to be a tougher matchup for us. I mean, the Life Gain deck is going to be tough for a red-white aggro deck. Especially when we're not hitting our mana. Yep, get in there, you. Alright, land is kind of what we wanted to see here. Now, despite it not being mana efficient, we're just going to go this way. I think we're going to hang out for a turn. Now the question becomes, what do we get rid of here? Hmm. I think, sadly enough, it's actually Luminous Bonds. Because I think Siege Breaker and the Volley Veteran... The Volley Veteran can l reduce the ground next turn. Play this fellow out. Caress. Well, the caress is not good for us. All right. Take three. Probably going to allow all this through, so I take 4, down to 11. So I think I need my creature cards. Alright, well, we know the opponent is forcing discards here, so I'm just going to play this dude out. Play my land out as well. Mind Rot's a thing. This will hopefully kill their Grave Digger. Sure. We have a little dude flying. All right, looks like they drew something worthwhile here. That's very, very bad for us, so that means they're going to start getting bat tokens. Yikes. Interesting attack there. They could double block with the Daybreak. Nope. Well, I think we're going to have a tough time in this one. Regal Bloodlord kind of puts us in a place where the Fountain of uh, whatever this is. The sort of enabling, but generally bad, uh, uncommon there. Uh, Fountain of Rejuvenation, Revitalization, whatever this thing's called. Renewal. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong, when I say it's a bad card, I say it's, it's, it's not a horrendous card in the right deck. But it's definitely an archetype enabler, not, a, you know, a, a staple. But it's going to be very good here. All right, well, a rise from the grave, that's pretty strong as well. They cannot activate it at a minimum, which means it can be blocked by Bogart and Brute. But we're at 10, they're at 18, they have a, a source of life gain. Um, I could bring in Smelts for that thing. Maybe I will. All right, the Anaki Ogre, well, that's a card. Can I win this? I think we just go ahead and concede this one and go to sideboards. I don't think we're going to win this. 
I don't think our chance of winning it. I do think this is probably a consideration. Um, crash through, meh. Inspired charge could be a thing. I do think I want to smelt though, because that artifact is a problem. I can kill a lot of the creatures. I just can't. I can't deal with artifacts right now. I did not have a way main deck to do it because I didn't get a divine. Whatever that is, uh, invoke the divine. Whatever that card is called. Um, hmm. The Vashinu Pyromancer seems kind of marginal at best. I think we go ahead and sub on this. I think this should be better. Um, but I think it's going to be a tough matchup, like I said. The Black-White Life Gain deck is going to be generally good against Boros Attack. If they get the life gain components they need. Their creatures are generally worse, but they do kind of gum up the ground. So having a 2-1 against 1-3 life linkers tends to be bad. Same could be said of Instigator, but Instigator does combo out decently well with the Trash Master. Um, and actually, I guess I do have a main deck way of dealing with artifacts. I have Trash Master, but um, trying to get to that seems a little bit... You know, we probably want an extra way to deal with it, because that Fountain of Renewal is going to be problematic. Um... Plus, I can just cycle it for a card in response to me sacking a creature, which, you know, seems like pretty bad value on my part. Maybe one of Luminous Bonds. Luminous Bonds does not deal well with uh, the token maker, that uh, that flyer we we're talking about. Hmm. Well, I'm going to play. I'm going to keep this, even though it doesn't really have a, a very aggressive start. But we did take out one of our two drops. Uh, but we have the Onaki Ogre we can play, and then to a Gallant uh, Cavalry. And then we have the Angel of Dawn to kind of top it off if we manage to uh, kind of get there. Okay, well, that was one of the better draws. I'm going to go ahead and play a Plains out, play these dudes out. They're probably not going to have many good attacks, but they do combo well with the Angel of Dawn. Is a Curve Topper. Yeah, I'm playing my spells main one. I kind of want my opponent to think I'm not that good. <laughs> and I don't think it matters if I cast it main one or not. There's not, like, a, a card that really punishes it here, I don't think. Gallant Cavalry Bear next play, and then we should be going into Angel of Dawn territory, which, you know, if my opponent plays nothing this turn, is going to be quite strong, I think. Okay, Luminous Bonds. That's fine. If they're going to spend their turn doing that, I think I'm okay with that. Alright, another one of these. Well, depending on what they do, we may just be playing another one next turn just to get more value out of the Angel. Um, yeah, he's talking about 100 card Singleton. Uh, my format, yes, it does have a better ban list than uh, 1v1, in my opinion as well. But I do manage it, so I'm probably biased. Alright, a vamp Vampire, a Neonate, and this thing. Death Touch, attacks, you may play blah 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 blah. Okay. I could have the removal spell this turn, the Liliana's Caress, but that would take up his whole turn. It's an instant speed card, though. So we have to be leery of that. My guess would be if he has that, he's just going to pass it and probably not attack. Um, this does what again? So if it attacks, you may pay action. You do return to a creature with a verdict mana cost X from your graveyard with a corpse counter on it. Okay, Epiture of Blood. I think I'm just going to keep on building up the team here. And do I attack? So he has a pretty good block with the vampire, whatever this is, neonate. Um, if I tap the Epiture of Blood, he could get a free... He could eat a free card on one of the knights. And block, ostensibly, another of the knights, the two twos. And then I get through a three, or I could block, he could trade with the Asnarith here. Um... Get rid of the Star Crown Stag and block a 2 2 and then take 4 damage. I think we're just better off waiting. Yeah, I think we just wait here. A lot of cards left in hand for the opponent, so I feel like this is going to be the one we have a tough time with. Um, 
blue decks, I think we tend to be okay with. Alright, they're keeping up removal more than likely, and they don't attack. Alright, so we're going to have removal cast here, my guess would be. If they do it on my upkeep, I tend to be happy with that. I guess one way that we played foolishly here is we probably should have left a land in hand um, to play around the Spectre that we know about. So we're going to play Angel of Dawn here. I'm going to move the Star Crown Stag. That's fine. They likely do that at the begin combat phase. Or they could just do it now. We'll tap the Epiture of Blood. And if we get another Angel of whatever this thing is, Angel of the Dawn, that would be pretty good next turn. We have a 3-3 three, three flyer we can get through with now. The Star Crown Stag can be blocked by the Isnarith, or Issa Ref. He can eat two free goblins, but then takes a lot. The Neonate does give him an additional life after post blocks, so... Yeah, I don't think he has a removal spell now, because I think if you have the removal spell, you probably remove the Star Crown Stag, because it is kind of problematic. It's at least gumming up the board a bit. Yeah, Snarth can eat Gabo, can trade with any of the other cards, and then the Neonate, you know, at most is blocking a 2 unless it wants to trade, or chump, rather. This is a decent bit of damage coming through. If they have the Liliana's Caress, I'm going to think they misplayed this a bit, because I think you wanted to do that before I tapped the dude. But it kind of felt like before they probably had that. If they just have Jack and shit, then I guess we get to beat through. Alright, this is going to block another 2-2. Yep, did they take the value blocks. That is fine. Alright, gain one. I drain one, and then lose his second one off of the Epiture of Blood. And they're down to one. Which puts them in a pretty precarious position, because... Now they have to flood the board, or, you know, Cleansing Nova, or something like that. Or put a big life linker on the board, which could be a thing that's going to happen here. So, they're a virtual 2 off of the Neonate. They can block two of my things as it stands right now, but I have a 3-3 flyer that just gets through. What's up, man? All right, what do we have here? A Strangling Spores. Okay, that gets rid of my flyer. That is a thing. Okay, so we just have him dead. All right, so do you want Act of Treason in this matchup? No, I mean, that went a lot better than the first one did. Do I want Smelt? I think I still want a Smelt, but... I don't know, Smelt is kind of bad. Maybe I just want an Inspired Charge. Like, that felt really good there when I just, like, curved out and just blew through his defenses. Um... Yeah, um, maybe another motivator. Maybe motivator is just better. Like up the creature count. We have the goblin trash master. I'm gonna try that. The smell just I don't know. That card feels really bad to kind of like play against or play around. This hand's fine. Um, it has some good top end. It has a turn one play. Obviously, would rather be on the play. And we've got an Anaki ogre to kind of break through in the beginning. Okay, the neonate is here. Uh, good draw there, an instigator. Okay, we're going to start juicing me for... Alright. Yep, nope, I'm not going to attack with my 1-1 one, one here. That seems silly. They can drain me for 1 and gain 1. But it's very mana intensive, obviously. Okay. This thing could be getting killed. We'll see. 
Try to do a courser next turn, haste it in. Yep, block, and then gain a life, drain a life. But take five, down to 17. And if we hit our land, the question becomes, do we just go Trash Master? We may. They could Strangling Spores, the Anaki Ogre, but that seems kind of weak. All right, well, land would be the best draw here. Okay. I think I'm going to save it, because I do think... Th I, I have them on a read for Strangling Spores here. And I'm going to play out the Pegasus Courser and save the Trash Master. Okay. Give this thing flying and probably have it get blown up by a spores. Yep, that's that's why I didn't play out the trash master. I think the trash master is better, and I don't want to really run it into spores here. And we'll just get him for a little bit of damage too here. But they don't get to also drain us this turn. Could also just Angel of the Dawn, but I think I'd rather save that um, after I get the Taskmaster down. Now they have their other removal spell available. Alright, Epature of Blood. No, Knightly Valor. Giving this thing Vigilance and making it big. Okay, well, they're going to attack with it. That's cool with me. I don't think they really want to attack here. Alright. Oh, I guess it has Vigilance. Fair enough. Okie doke. Hmm. Okay, Hyromancer's Cage is going to kill the Goblin Taskmaster, of course. Well, they attack with both. Okay, we'll let that pass. Strong rip. This is five, and I have uh, five gabos. Okay. Uh, we have Angel of Dawn if we hit a land, and we have a Sure Strike, which is probably good enough. It looks like they're a little bit mana based down. Alright, they're going to gain a life back. <coughs> Alright, land. That's going to come through. And I could double block it too, but... Angel of the Dawn. Alright, there we go. Well, I think that was a tougher, supposed to be a tougher matchup for us, but it looks like our opponent kind of petered out a little bit there. Angel of the Dawn was, you know, two Angel of the Dawn in, in a deck that has 21 creatures, two of which, three of which, four of which make more, more, more creatures. Seems very good. Um, so, nice little red-white deck. And, well, we're going into finals now, so hopefully, you know, we can uh, can do well with the deck. In the final round, I'm going to use the restroom real quick, guys. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back and uh, awaiting MTGO to uh, get us an opponent. You know, I haven't played much sealed. Um, one sealed's a little more pricey, and I tend to have less fun doing it. Um, but just because, you know, it's just it's one of those things where 
draft is just, I don't know, so much better. It's such a better format than sealed is, I think. But I feel like oftentimes like you can get a good sealed pool and it'll just carry you and you can't really play out of a bad one. Or it's tougher to play out of a bad one, like very tough. Yeah, that's that's what happens. I only got Tezzeret at a minimum. All right. So, hope this hand's good enough. Um, it needs to hit lands, but... All right, Swamp. Well, that's exactly what we want to hit. Motivator, and go. Hopefully no turn two play. Alright, the the Shinu Pyromancer. Basically uh doing its best to be a vexing vexing devil here. Get him for a nice, healthy dose of 4 damage, but black-white again, which is a little spooky for this deck. But we do have Sure Strike, which is good removal, and we do have a Volley Veteran, which can remove most good threats. Okay, takes Vengeance. Alright. Well, the joke is kind of on him, because I guess I should have played probably the Motivator here. Gabo Tribal. So Vashino Pyromancer is going to basically be a goblin guide here. It's it's going to have gotten in six damage, which is kind of like the paradigm for how, what makes a goblin guide good. Is it does six total damage um, before any of your burn. All right, well, they're up to four mana now. We may or may not get to four mana, but if we don't, we do have a sure strike play or a motivator play. Okay, well, what do we think here? I do think that I'm going to be the least impressed. Probably by motivator at this point, in all honesty. Yeah. We'll cut the motivator, lose two life, and hopefully draw any land to, um... Alright, we do not. So I think that being the case, we just charge and try to remove this thing. I'm telling you I have a combat trick. Nope, you just take. Okay. If I'm bluffing you, I mean, honestly, if I was bluffing there, it would have been awesome, because I mean, if I had a land, I'd just play on a Gallant Cavalry and be very far ahead. I think it's one of those situations where you almost need to block. Alright, the Drill Master can get in some damage. It'll pass through three. That is fine, because I think I'm winning this race quite well, and the Drill Master does not block all that well. Okay, another Drill Master. So it's going to pass through uh, five damage. That's cool. Well, that is a poor draw, but we are playing a land light deck. I'm just going to pass it. I don't think I'm going to try to attack into this. Um, I suppose I could just send these two idiots in, but I think I want to keep them around, so I'm just going to say go. I don't really want to trade a combat trick for a cavalry drill master that's already done its job. I will here if they attack with all of them. They're not going to attack. Alright, they're going to stay back. Okie doke. Knight of the Tusk. That's a big man. Alright, just need to hit lands here. Alright, thank you, deck. And at this point, I think we are most comfortable just playing out uh, this gentleman, or gentle lass, whatever you want to call her. Get in with the, get in for four damage. I, th I assume. I don't think they're going to send in the uh, cavalry drill masters. I could eat their dude if they don't have a trick. Okay. Cavalry, more of it. 
trying to get in the cavalry here. Okay. Now we lose four life here. That's a lot. I'll go ahead and get rid of one of these flyers. That will get three and that's fine. All right, Angel of the Dawn. Get in there, all he is. Try to do the overrun here. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're playing around shock. But to my reckoning, they're still quite dead from this set of blocks. And that is why Angel of the Dawn is a great card. Now, if they have like two removal spells, yeah, they could stay in the game. But we're still we still have good blocks on the backswing, and they're losing two things. Okay, okay, strangling spores, cool. And they're down to one, and I have a flyer. All right. Well, if we draw a mountain, no, that doesn't quite work with the siege breaker. But we still have pretty lethal attacks on the backswing. Another black white deck. Doesn't like this is a life gain deck, though. It looks like it's more of just like a black white dude's deck. Okay. Well, one point is all it takes. Higher Mancer's Cage. Getting one of my dudes. Yep. And I still have lethal attacks, my friend. Good game. Yep. Not not blocking. I will I will gladly go to three. If you want zero cards, unless I'm misreading this board horribly. You don't have life link. While we're playing this out still, I do not know, but I'm not going to show them the Siege Breaker now that I know. They have Hiromancer's Cage, which is kind of cool. And you die, yep, die here, I believe. I don't need to play that, so I won't show it. Alright, and I'll win by one point here, and with nothing on the board, basically. Okie doke. All right. Well, crash through maybe. Um, Active treason maybe. Inferno Hellion. Eh. Let me see. Like this card does not impress me that much. Explosive apparatus. I mean, it's good against a deck like. It's not even really great against a deck like mine. Cause it's so inefficient. It's four mana to have a sh the value of a shock. I don't know why they're playing this card. Inspired charge would have been pretty decent there. I mean, it would have ended the game, but. Meh. So they have luminous bonds and. Hieromancer's Cage, whatever that is. The the more expensive but more universal Luminous Bonds, the rare the rare Luminous Bonds. It was kind of weird because in like Dominaria Limited, um, there was Gideon's Reproach and Sealed Away, and like I think in some cases like Sealed Away was actually actively worse. I remember like playing against like uh, a Sira Angel or some like Vigilance Threats, and I'm just like, man, like I wish I did not have this uncommon. I wish I had a common. Um, this hand is keepable, but it's a little iffy. I am going to keep this, though. Like, I'm on the draw. Um, I have one of my few removal spells in deck. 
that was a good pick up there. So if I can shock their turn two play and then run into a Bogarten Brute, that's pretty strong, and then into Gallant Cavalry. We obviously want to continue to draw gas with this hand, but I don't think it was worth going to six, because this is a 16 land deck, and oftentimes, you know, you're just going to lose out a lot more by doing that. All right, well, we have continued to draw gas. All right, well, hopefully something that we can kill here. It looks like they probably have a, like, a kill spell. Oh, no, we're not in three. All right. I could play, like, a mana screw, but I'm not. I'm going to play out the Bogarten Brute here. Let them... I don't think there's a three mana instant kill spell. Yeah, no, there's not. It's, like, the spores is on four is, like, the nearest one, and there's the five, and Liliana's Caress. They've not shown us Caress yet, though. They've shown us two enchantment-based removal spells, and if they want to remove this thing for their whole turn four, like, I'm cool with that. Like, I'll just play a Gallant Cavalry on, I think. All right, this card. Well, do I need my fourth, or my fifth land yet? No. I lose two life here. Well, I guess that was rationale for keeping the land. I'm going to play the Cavalry out, despite um, this the Star Crown being able to get through the Fell Spectre, but I kind of don't want them to attack me. I want them to be on the defensive here. Okay, this card is quite strong. I'm going to play this Gentleman out, and this Gentleman out. I'm going to go ahead and attack with all here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm representing Shock pretty strongly. I only have one in the deck, shockingly enough. Okay. But I am very glad to get rid of this value train right here. At the cost of a token. I guess I shouldn't yield because I do have Remorseful Cleric that I could use to stifle a uh, graph or a uh, grape digger. Okay, Skeletal Archer. That can kill off the Goblin Motivator or the Remorseful Cleric. They're going to kill off this dude. I think I just go ahead and sack him. Get a little bit of value off of him. Okay. Okay, and a Take Vengeance. Cool. Please tap down this dude. Thank you. Alrighty. Okay, Sky Scanner. Cool. Very likely they have the spores in hand now, but they would not. I would have used spores before. They would have used it before. There could be like a pump spell or something they have. All right, they're gonna double block it and probably use a pump spell. All right, yep, you got it. All right, well, you got him.
Okay, well, at a minimum, I'm not discarding a card. That's why we play our lands down here. There you go. Obviously, they have to be a little worried about the Angel of Dawn just coming down and wrecking face. Soon they start. Nope, they're not going to attack. All right, Gabo, go. I'm pretty much going to play anything I draw here. And go. Board stall time. I'm not going to attack here. I'm going to wait. I think the chances of them having like a strangling sport or something are pretty high, and I would prefer them to target this and then sacrifice it to destroy the sky scanner. Yep. Yep, sacrifice himself. Yes, I would love to do that. Yep, guessed it right. That's what they had. Get some value off of it. Get them to spend two for one there, which is pretty strong. They weren't attacking before, so chances they're going to start trying to attack now are a little bit lower. Alright, Suspicious Bookcase, so well, they can start passing damage through their Skeleton Archer, but then I'm going to probably start attacking. Okay, land. Well, what's their last card? Probably Removal Spell. Alright, Knights. not going to attack yet. I'm just going to wait. Like, I think the the long game should benefit me, but I don't know. I could be wrong on that. <clears throat> They're starting to get kind of overwhelmed. I mean, obviously keeping cards in my hand is not going to benefit me. This deck is not going to be doing much other than playing whatever it draws. But let's consider this through. They can block four things. They block this, 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 and one of these. They take two, one, 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 one. Um... Well, let's think through this through. So if they want to actually eat something, they can double block something with the Fell Spectres. Eat one of the 2-2s. Two if they do that, they take an additional 2 damage. Um, so if they block just singularly, they eat a 2-2, two -two, they block 2-2-2s, two -two -two, so they block out 6 damage, block a third 2-2 two -two on the wall, and then take 1-2-3-4-5. Th I lose a 2-2 two -two that way which means that I do less damage on the following turn, and I don't eat any of their stuff. Um, I think they're holding Jack and Shit in hand, to be honest. I don't. If, if they are, they're holding like maybe like a one removal spell, like a Luminous Bonds they don't want to cast right now. So if I attack here, like I get through for... for five damage down to three, but I lose a 2-2. Two -two. I think it's worth it. Start just... This will put them down to three if they don't have anything. Now they could also double block something. Yeah, I'm going to say they'll eat these guys. Cool. This is going to put them to dead. They, they can't do this block. That's kind of what I was considering. <coughs> yeah, they have to block some number of 2-2s. Two if they do this, they're very dead to the attack next turn. It's tough for them to... Alright, that puts them into one, which puts them very dead on the following turn. So, that's not how I per se would have blocked that. Now they're, you know, dead to just any attack. They weren't per se dead to an attack if they kind of blocked how I was considering. But that works out better for us. Alright, this thing... Well, you need to stop a bunch of stuff. Because one damage kills you now. So, chump attacks... 
to the rescue. And it looks like we're probably going to win this. I mean, they could, you know, I think they do have a Luminous Bonds in hand. I think that's what they're holding. Yeah. They're not going to show us, but cool. We get a qualifier point. We get six packs of uh, uh, whatever the set is, M19. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. A cool little red-white deck. Um, nothing really crazy going on. It did have two Angels, which were awesome in it. Um, it also had a Trash Master, which was kind of cool in that last game. We were able to kind of tech our opponent, um, kind of tell what they were holding based on how the first couple games had played out and how they had been playing it. Um, it looked like they were more comfortable playing a control role, but, um, you know, w when you assess kind of how a player is playing, you can tend to be able to, you know, get them to uh, to play into your hands, which in that case allowed us to get a two-for-one off the Trash Master, which is a pretty sweet play. I actually enjoyed doing that to the Sky Scanner. It's, it's just value. It's, it's value for value. Now, given it's, you're not really up cards because the Sky Master or the Sky Scanner already drew a card, but it's just kind of fun to get them. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to cut it there. Uh, this was an M19 draft, a cool little 3-0, uh, pretty good time, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care now.